This week on Manor and Maker, we do a staircase introduction, get crafty for Christmas, and of course, decorate our tree. I decided to come into Paris. I had to, well, I drove uh, Dee and Ryan to the airport and I am picking up my parents on Wednesday. So I decided to just hang out um, and wait for them there. It takes to spend a couple of nights near the airport. Um, but I figured, hey, it's only a half hour ride on the train from, uh, from where my hotel is. So I decided to come on into Paris. I love Paris. You know, it just, it just washes over you. It's, a, it's like a warm blanket. And I decided to come down to the, uh, the, the market, the Christmas market uh, in the Tuileries in, in Paris. So that's what I've done. And here's a few shots of it. <laughs> We have new visitors for the holidays. My parents have decided to come. So this is my mother, Jan, and this is my father, Phil. Very proud dad. Yeah. You're very welcome. Bonjour. Hey everybody. I am just back from the salon where I got all my pandemic hair chopped off and uh, a lot of the damage is gone and I'm really happy with how fluffy and curly it is. So I hope you guys love it too, but I'm pretty happy. Anyway, I am outside right now channeling my inner D and my outer Chateau love. Vivian was at the Met this week and there were these glorious items in the gift shop of golden magnolia leaves. And we happen to have a magnolia tree on the property. So I've grabbed the gold spray paint, which we were trying to make a, a sleigh out of a, a sled. Uh, and I am spray painting some magnolia leaves and I'm really liking how they turned out. So I thought I'd show you guys. Here's the before and honestly, they're pretty gorgeous as they are, but I've just gathered the ones that have already fallen. And then here's the after where we've applied the golden spray paint and I think I'm in love and I can't wait to get these on a garland. to make some swags to hang from the lights on either side of the doorway and I've got some of the lower branches that we trimmed off of the tree and I'm going to start with those and maybe add some other greenery and you know my never-ending laurel and see how we go. It's looking pretty floofy right now. I've got three different kinds of evergreens going finishing with the cedar because that reminds me of home. There was lots of cedars in the township line where I grew up. I will add on some laurel leaves and see where we go from there. It's looking so floofy. Uh, I've added in, of course, some mistletoe and a little bit of red raspberry leaves that we found. They were pretty good for texture. I do think we're a little light on color, so I think it's time for some golden magnolia leaves. Might have borked it a bit with the ribbon. I'm not sure I love how the white is longer than the red. Maybe I'll switch that up. I was just kind of going with lengths of ribbon that I'd already cut. So maybe we'll have to tweak that up a little bit. But it's added a little bit more color and I think we've got a lot going on there now. So I'll add a fancy bow at the top and see how we're doing. And they're up. We're just uh, securing them either side of the door. 
and I am pretty pleased with how they turned out. I think I'd love to have some wider satin ribbon and do even bigger bows. But generally, I'm really pleased with how they look. They look gorgeous. What do you think, Jan? Thank you for your help. <laughs> I want it noted that uh, Jan was the one up on the ladder to affix the one on the left side of the door. I want that duly noted. You like them? Good. All right, people, this is what you get when you have a supervising nuclear operator working on your Christmas tree. You get improvised tools. Let me see if I can get that focused a little bit for you. Come on, tools. There we go. Improvised tools for hanging Christmas ornaments. So we have done it. We've gotten through, or we've, we've decorated the tree for this year. Biggest tree we've ever decorated. So for it, sure. it, was, it was a big task, but thanks to mom and dad down there somewhere. Thanks guys. <laughs> and now the final moment, the star on the top. Awesome. Ready? Let's do it. Here it goes. Well, we tried to do it together, but we needed to do a little adjustment to the top of the tree. So in the interest of sharing with you guys, here is the topper for the tree. Yay! It's official first Christmas! We are off foraging again, just a little bit short on evergreens, and we're hoping to find a few little red berries or something to go along the mezzanine with the other boughs that we've put together to form a really lovely garland. And I've got a helper. Jan's going to come along and we're going to see if we can find something festive. I've got a few man-made walls that are just covered with ivy. So this is becoming one of my favorites. We're just out back of the barn. Jan there helping me out. 
we are really not having much luck in terms of color. We're of course in the in the depths of December, so what's left is a little bit scraggly and I feel like I'd just be taking from the birds. This is gonna look beautiful. Yeah, this is our little, what we gathered so far. We've got a mix of evergreens. We found a few little red raspberry leaves, but we've just got the usual mix of a little bit of evergreen, some laurel leaves, and uh, what, we're thinking of doing little crafty bows later? Yes, we will. Yeah, Crafty add a little bows. bit more color, good to go. <laughs> and the reason we're starting from twine, I'm just gonna throw this out there, is that that's what I have on hand. And well, I'm boy buying garland from scratch is really expensive here. It's basically 20 euros a meter. We just can't seem to find anything. All right, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it seemed really excessive for what you're, you're paying for. I guess in the area we are, with what's available, it just wasn't what I wanted. So, doing it the long hard way. Well, all right, let's see how it works out. We're still working away on the garland here, just filling out with a little more greenery and tucking some odds and ends in. And then we are going to add some of the mistletoe berries. And I've been working away with Jan on some little uh, bows that we can add in. So these are just meant to be a little bit of color from a distance. And I've done a very simple bow that's just sewn together because I don't have a glue gun. And we'll do something a little fancier and bigger for the center bits. My name is Steven, and I'm a graphic designer and artist. My wife, Sarah, is a former IT professional who loves to sew. We've lived our lives in Canada, yet traveled the world seeking different cultures and experiences. Our travels often led us back to Europe, and France in particular. We dreamed of moving to France for many years and living our life surrounded by art, culture, and history. One day, in 2020, we were working from home when I turned to Sarah and popped the question she was longing to hear. What would have to be true for us to buy a chateau in France? We searched online for months to see what was available and dream of the possibilities. We started to let ourselves believe that it might actually be achievable. We narrowed our search towards some properties when we happened upon the one that captured our hearts, the Chateau de Saint-Germain-de-Pré. A year later, and we've made the move to France to start our new adventure in our beautiful chateau. We created Manor and Maker to reflect the two sides of our adventure. One, to live as chateau owners with all the ups and downs, and two, to pursue our passions as makers, creating art in all its forms. We will invite others to come together, united by their passions, to share in this adventure. We invite you to join us too, as we bring her dreams to life. Welcome to Manor and Maker.